Hello, dear subscribers, with you as Drake on the Crime Story Diaries channel. The eve of Christmas, this joyful time for the whole family, especially when relatives living in other countries come to our visit. People gather together and simply revel in the pleasant company of loved ones. But not for everyone is this period a time of light, especially if someone's plotted a bloody reckoning. This here story is about 26-year-old Elle Edwards. On Christmas Eve 2022, she was celebrating with her friends in a pub in Ali Village, Liverpool, UK. The gal was real vibrant and beautiful. She worked as a cosmetologist in a local beauty salon and was also an assistant to a dermatologist. Elle was naturally positive and mighty kind, which allowed her to win over even the most demanding clients. Elle was purdy and had become an excellent specialist in her fields. The gal was cheerful and always smiling, but at the same time she remained determined constantly moving towards her goals and dreams. On December 24, 2022, her sister Lucy flew in from Dubai to spend the holidays with the family, and Elle eagerly awaited her return. They decided to celebrate this long-awaited event in style, so the girls and their friends headed to the local pub. Here they had a great time, laughing a lot, dancing, and singing karaoke. In the merry atmosphere, no one noticed that a person to whom kindness was alien was nearby. Around 11.50 p.m., an emergency call came in. As they were exiling the pub, no less than 12 shots were fired, and two of them hit Elle. She suffered a gunshot wound to the head that proved to be mighty serious. The dispatcher directed emergency services to the scene. They urgent like arrived at the pub, loaded the gal into an ambulance, and took her to the local hospital. However, she died on the way, as her injuries was incompatible with life. When the police informed the victim's family about the tragedy, they was in a state of shock. No one believed it, and no one understood how this could have happened to Elle. No one suspected that this beautiful and cheerful gal could have had deadly enemies. In the early stages of the investigation, the detectives had no leads. The assailant had attacked unexpected like and disappeared just as mysteriously, leaving only a shell cast in and the bleeding victim at the crime scene. The attack was sudden but well planned and gave Elle no chance of survival. But was the gal the true target of the attack, or did she become a random victim of a madman? An unknown car stopped near the pub entrance, and minutes later the shooting started. In addition to the deceased, four other men received gunshot wounds of varying severity, all of them young people aged 22 to 33 who were spending the evening in the establishment and lived in the nearby towns. Initially, the police were inclined to believe that the murdered woman was a random victim. It was known that criminal gangs were operating in the area periodically. The shooting was likely a routine showdown between their members. However, all of this was just conjecture, which would have to be proven or disproved in the course of the investigation. So the detectives delved deeper into the victim's personality. Like the witnesses to the crime, the victim's relatives were at a loss as to who could have wanted Elle's death, as the girl seemed to have no ill wishes or enemies capable of such horrors. The detectives decided to interview other witnesses and the victims of the unknown criminal's gunfire. In addition, law enforcement officers requested the pub owner's video surveillance recordings. It would be necessary to talk to dozens of people and analyze several hours of video recordings. Several police officers were working on the extensive investigation. It was necessary to answer several difficult questions. There were too many victims of the attack. But was this spontaneous aggression? Or did the perpetrator pursue a specific target? All witnesses to the incident were interrogated. However, checking mobile communications data took more time. The media were notified to assist in the investigation. Law enforcement officers urged anyone with valuable information to come to the police station. First and foremost, this concerned possible video recordings made by random eyewitnesses, on any of which the car in which the aggressor arrived might appear. After the crime, the police held a meeting with local residents. The purpose of this communication was to persuade people possessing valuable information to share it with law enforcement officers. It was assumed that someone might have seen the moment of the attack or know the criminal. People were urged not to be afraid of the criminals and the local feuding clans. Community leaders supported local residents during this difficult time. In addition to the conversations, activists went door to door and communicated with the neighbors. Special trained officers worked with the family of the deceased their goal being to provide them with support in connection with the heavy loss. In the course of this work, it was established that the perpetrator had left the pub parking lot in a dark colored car. Eyewitness accounts regarding it make differed. It was dark and it was difficult to make out anything, but the most likely was a dark Mercedes A-Class. 
Later, this was confirmed after checking the outdoor surveillance cameras. The killer did not immediately open fire, but drove up to the parking lot and observed the pub visitors for some time. He sat in the car so that he could freely see the entrance and most of what was happening inside. Apparently, he was choosing the most convenient moment for the attack. After a few minutes of surveillance, when L came out, the criminal quickly got out of the car, fired 12 shots, then instantly got back behind the wheel and disappeared. Investigators, after studying the recordings, made an important conclusion. The attacker was alone. No one helped him. It was not possible to trace the exact location where the perpetrator fled. Therefore, the detectives went door to door to all local residents, describing the car and recounting the circumstances of the incident, trying to establish the identity of the killer. Patrolling the streets was carried out around the clock, and this yielded results. Just two days after the shooting, detectives detained two suspects. But no names were mentioned until all the circumstances were clarified. However, it was not possible to prove their involvement in the crime, in particular because the murder weapon was not found. After that, the detectives made a statement to the public, saying that they would not rest until the unknown shooter was punished. All this was intended to calm the local residents, who were outraged by the rampant crime and the powerlessness of the authorities. It was also assumed that the attack had been provoked by a feud between local gangs. In this case, L would be considered a random victim. However, all this was also just an assumption that remained to be verified. In the course of the investigation, it was possible to establish that the potential targets could have been Jake Duffy and Kieran Seld, members of the local Beechwood gang, who were spending the evening in the pub. It became known that they had been in long-term, fierce conflict with another group claiming this territory. On December 29, the police arrested another person, but he was not the one who opened fire. The suspect had a solid alibi that excluded him from the list of suspects. However, the detective suspected that he had participated in the setup for the attack. Around the same time, the dark Mercedes car in which the killer had left the pub parking lot was identified, but due to the lack of direct evidence, the name of the third suspect was also not disclosed. There were some difficulties with the found car. The car was traced through video surveillance systems and identified thanks to the cameras, but law enforcement officers were too late. On December 31, the police department received a report that a fire had started near the scene of the shooting. When the special services arrived at the scene, they found a dark Mercedes similar to the perpetrator's vehicle, which was engulfed in flames. The vehicle was completely burned out. Valuable evidence was lost in the flames. The perpetrators clearly knew that the police were on their trail, so they decided to destroy one of the direct pieces of evidence. Despite the fact that the fire did not completely destroy the car, it was confirmed that it had been used during the shooting. However, the Mercedes did not belong to the perpetrators, but had been stolen shortly before the attack. Presumably, the arson was committed intentionally to complicate the investigation after the murder of competitors. On January 11, two more suspects, a 22-year-old man and a 23-year-old woman, were delivered to the police department. They were arrested in central Wales. The man's name was Connor Chapman. He was well known to the police. He had an extensive criminal record that he had accumulated over the past five years before the murder of L. Edwardser. Connor had started with daring lawbreakings and gradually sank deeper into the abyss of crime. One of his first serious crimes was a car theft under aggravating circumstances. He had repeatedly become a suspect in robberies, hooliganism and threatening behaviour. Once the young man was involved in a chase with the police, after which he abandoned the car and hid in the bushes nearby. When they detained him, the criminal said that he did not understand what chase they were talking about and that he was here just waiting for a friend. In this case, he became the real star. The detainee's data ended up in newspaper headlines. Connor Chapman was from Birkenhead, Liverpool. His parents had left him at an early age, so his grandparents had formalised guardianship. It was in their house that the hero of the story moved. The teenager dropped out of high school shortly before the exams. In general, he studied poorly and no special hopes were pinned on him. He was always considered a problem child. The young hooligan first became a defendant in a court case in 2014, when he was 14 years old. Connor was accused of shoplifting. As early as 2016, he committed another crime. His involvement in the theft of a car was proven when the young man was detained in a stolen vehicle. He did not have a driver's license or insurance, which was a violation of the terms of his suspended sentence. In 2017, car theft was added to the storage of prohibited substances. 
During this period, he was also under police supervision, so he had again violated the restraining order. As a result, he was banned from accessing several parts of the city. Connor was not allowed to appear in public places, as he clearly posed a threat to society. However, as early as 2018, he violated the ban again. The patrol detained him in a public place. The young man had a knife and prohibited substances with him. In the same year, the general public first heard about Connor Chapman. He appeared on the pages of the local newspaper after an unsuccessful attempt to escape from the police in a stolen car. The city patrol noticed a stolen Audi on the street and ordered the driver to stop and get out of the car with his hands up. However, the 18-year-old Chapman did not obey, provoking a chase. During the short flight, Connor committed a large number of traffic violations. In particular, he accelerated to more than 80 kilometers per hour in areas with a 30 kilometer limit. Connor repeatedly drove into oncoming traffic and in the end crashed into the curb. At speed, the car was thrown aside and turned around. The driver could not continue the orgy, so he got out of the car and ran away. However, even here he was unlucky as the patrol caught up with him in the bushes just a few hundred meters away. In his defense, the young man said that he was waiting here for a friend, but the deception was obvious. The lawyer of Connor explained in court that his client had fallen under the influence of a bad company of older friends. The court left him unpunished and the need to release the budding criminal. He was found to have attention deficit disorder and a number of other disorders identified by a private specialist during the trial. Despite this, due to numerous violations and potentially dangerous behavior on the road, he was sentenced to a term of up to eight months in prison for two minors. The young man also received a ban on driving a car, which was in effect after his release. Thus, the budding criminal had achieved 14 convictions for 30 criminal episodes by the time he reached adulthood. It was obvious that he had no intention of changing and categorically refused to fit into society. Everyone understood that he was potentially dangerous but legal grounds for isolating him from society had not been found. This was due to the fact that so far no person had been seriously injured by his inadequate behavior. The public was outraged by the powerlessness of the authorities. Everything was shaping up so that the criminal elements could do nothing until they kill or maim innocent people. And that's how it turned out. In January 2020, the court again sentenced Connor Chapman, this time to 10 months in prison. He was again caught in a public place with a cold weapon and substances in his pocket. A whole bouquet of prohibitive lists. During this period, the police openly appeared on TV channels, urging the public to beware of this young man. After serving his sentence, protected months, he again got involved in crime and was wanted for at least five criminal episodes. When he was caught, the young criminal said that he had spent more time behind bars than free. And he did not seem upset about this, but rather proud of his achievements However, Connor had no intention of stopping there. By the age of 20, his service record had expanded again. By this point, he had received 19 sentences for 43 crimes. But in the summer of 2022, the inadequate young man found himself free again. This happened just six months before the death of L. Edwardser. During this period, Connor was again brought before the court. His lawyer tried to play on pity, telling the story that the first child of the young man was born while he was in prison. At this point, his girlfriend was pregnant with a girl. The young man claimed that he had rethought his life and wanted to get on the path of correction. Of course, these were loud, false words. The only thing he wanted was to get free and return to the path of crime. During this period, the police already knew that he was a member of one of the local criminal gangs engaged in the sale of prohibited substances. However, the criminal was tried not for these serious crimes, but for burglary and theft of two electric motorcycles. On December 24, 2022, a skirmish broke out between two rival criminal gangs. They began to argue over the division of the territory near the wooden church in Beechwood Estates. They failed to reach an agreement, after which the young gangster decided to take revenge. He armed himself with a submachine gun and waited for about three hours until he tracked down his targets. He wanted to kill Curran Seld and Jake Duffy, who had gone to the Moyak pub for rest. Shortly before midnight, the criminal drove up to the parking lot and began to observe. He identified his victims and waited for the right moment to attack, then ran out of the car and fired 12 bullets into the building. He managed to seriously injure Duffy, but despite the threat to his life, he survived the attack. However, the unlucky L. Edwardser was not so fortunate. Two bullets hit her in the head. The young beauty fought for her life, but died in the arms of the medics on the way to the hospital. 
The girl accidentally met the killer's targets that evening and did not even suspect that the festive revelry could end so tragically. The pub was crowded, then one person was killed and four were wounded. One 22-year-old man was shot in the leg, a 24-year-old young man was wounded in the arm, and a 33-year-old man in the wrist. None of these injuries were life-threatening. Elle's friends tried to provide her with assistance and perform artificial respiration right on the spot. However, this was not enough to save her life. Elle's sister Lucy was much luckier. She lived in Dubai and flew home to celebrate Christmas with her family. Just minutes before the attack, she had left the establishment, so she was not affected at all. Later, Lucy recalled how she had wanted to take her sister with her, but the girl wanted to stay with her friends. On January 25, 2023, the funeral of the young girl took place. Hundreds of concerned people came to say goodbye to the random victim of gang showdowns. The body was brought to the local church in a hearse drawn by four white horses. Even the pub that had become the site of the girl's last celebration was closed that day as a mark of respect for her memory. The owner of the establishment published a message of support for Elle's family on his official social media page. Connor Chapman was charged with a whole list of charges, the main one of which was murder. It became known that the perpetrator had an accomplice, namely the 20-year-old Thomas. After the arrest and during the searches, a video recording was found on this young man, which had been made shortly before the attack. In it, Connor is handing over a weapon and saying that he is going to settle accounts with someone. After the attack, they together hid the stolen Mercedes in order to get rid of it later. The murder weapon was never found. However, the killer's DNA traces were found on one of the shell casings fired. It was obvious that it was Connor who loaded the weapon before the attack. In addition, red gloves were found during searches in his house, which were clearly visible in the CCTV footage from Moyek. After the crime, when the perpetrators had abandoned the car, they ordered a taxi under a false name. They used the driver's services to cover their tracks and confuse the investigation. Around 5 a.m. they returned to the place where the hidden car was located. Here the criminals tried to cover their tracks. However, something went wrong. Ultimately, they decided to get rid of the car by setting it on fire. Thomas Nord was found guilty on all charges brought against him. In July 2023, the court sentenced him to nine years in prison. This modest sentence was due to the fact that he had not yet managed to accumulate such a wide criminal history as his accomplice. Jake and Curran were wounded in the moment of the attack, but both managed to survive the assault. A look at their lifestyle made the aggression of one of the members of the rival gangs quite understandable. Both were members of the local Beechwood gang, which was openly in conflict with another group claiming this territory. It became known that on December 23, 2023, just a day before the attack with firearms, they had already been attacked. On that occasion, another person from Connor Chapman's group had assaulted them. Both were beaten, but did not receive serious injuries. Apparently, they considered this a random fight and calmly went to relax in the pub. While the shooter awaited his sentence in the case of the murder of the innocent victim, both targets of his attack were already in prison. Curran was sentenced to 27 months in prison for an attack on members of the rival criminal group. Another nine months were added to the sentence for the fight. His friend was sentenced to two years and nine months for a similar offense. Obviously, they were trying to avenge the attempted murder. Prohibitive court orders were also issued against both of them, with a whole list of restrictions. Of course, this method did not allow protecting citizens from this gang of criminals. However, in case of further violations, more severe punishment could be applied to them due to ignoring the prescriptions. The public was outraged that potentially dangerous members of criminal gangs were getting away with minimum sentences after each crime. The bans were clearly ineffective and did not contribute absolutely anything to public safety. This became especially obvious when it was found that Chapman already had a ban on visiting the region where the pub was located. But this did not prevent him from stealing a car and coming to the public place, despite the fact that he also had a driving ban. The events that had occurred once again raised the question of toughening punishments and revising the existing norms of the legal system. However, so far this flawed system has not suffered any serious changes. At the trial on the case of Elle's murder, Connor tried to refute that it was he who appeared on the CCTV footage. According to him, during this period he was at home, packing Christmas gifts. However, a sufficient amount of evidence was collected to expose the lie. The hearings on the case lasted three and a half weeks, during which all the circumstances preceding the attack were revealed. 
it became known that the reason for the attack was only the competition between the two criminal gangs dividing the territory nearby. The defendant did not even know the victim, he simply did not care about her fate, as well as the fate of all the other innocent people in the bar. He was driven only by blind fury, which he could never control. After the attempted murder of two competitors, Connor planned to flee to Spain to cover his tracks. He used a stolen car and also got rid of the murder weapon. Trying not to fall into the hands of the police, he avoided using any mode of transport. The detectives detained the criminal literally at the airport. After the arrest, Connor tried to deceive the police, claiming that the Mercedes he was seen driving on the day of the murder was not stolen. According to him, this was a common car of the criminal group, which they used for the distribution of substances. The guy claimed that he was not behind the wheel of the vehicle and also continued to convince the jury that he did not open fire that evening. He was desperately trying to get out of the situation. The defendant stated that he had only just learned that someone from the criminal group had used the vehicle for an attack on the pub. Before the jury retired to consider the verdict, the father of the innocent victim made a short speech. He sincerely hoped that the criminal would never again be able to spend Christmas with his loved ones in freedom. The jurors, consisting of Pity Ashen and Saim Jenshin, came to a unanimous decision after three hours of discussion. In their opinion, Connor Chapman was guilty of all the charges brought against him. He cynically committed the crime and did not repent of the fact that he accidentally killed the beautiful 26-year-old girl. The whole life that lay ahead of her, and he took it away. Instead of remorse, the heartless Connor spent several days carefully getting rid of all the evidence and traces of the murder that could link him to this bloody event. The motive for the attack was the competition between criminal gangs. On July 7, 2023, Connor was sentenced. He was sent to serve a life sentence with the possibility of parole after 48 years from the start of serving the sentence. After the verdict was announced, the victim's father victoriously raised his fist. The incident provoked a wave of public outrage. The residents of the city could not feel safe, knowing that they were at the junction of the confrontation between criminal gangs dividing spheres of influence. They knew that these people had a large amount of firearms and were not afraid to use them, as proved by the murder of El. The girl's father said he wanted to set up a foundation to support victims like his daughter. He believed that the main goal would be to fight to reduce the number of weapons in the hands of civilians. The grieving man wanted this tragic accident to become a lesson and help save the lives of such innocents in the future. I'm glad you joined me on my channel. Come by again and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss new videos. See you next time.